Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I am JT. Hey guys, you know who I am. <laughs> Better believe, you know, there's no one else here but this other guy. He's also Joey, but don't worry about it. Skincare, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about it. Skincare routine. Uh, it's not something that's talked about in jujitsu, even though you do copper hiding. And it's not talked about for dudes. No. We'll nah, t- we, JT and I were chatting about this. It's um, obviously like skincare and cosmetics are marketed heavily towards f- towards females. Ladies, yes. Um, and so, you know, not all of it's good information, right? People trying to sell products. But arguably, you know, I think fair to say that uh, females tend to have a better understanding of how to look after their skin versus males. Yeah. What do we get? We get like, hey, buy this Lynx or buy this <laughs> like cheap fucking buy this heavily fragranced like body wash buy this poison that's probably not good for you and will lower yeah, your testosterone but chuck it on that's right it's full of like micro beads plastics and shit and clean your whole body with it that's yeah. sort of the thing is it's like scrub that shit down yeah and and look i i think the reason why this has come up more recently is uh we did do a thing on skin infections you know that's a thing but we can also look at if you train in the gi uh, it can be pretty harsh. You can get gi burn on your face. Oh, yeah. You know, jujitsu. I gave something to Nate yesterday. Oh, <laughs> good times. Yeah. Yeah, well done. That's good. Which I felt bad about, but nah. let, let me qualify. Nah, shout out, shout, shout out Nate. Nate is an aspiring black belt. He's a brown belt. He's tough. That's he's a, killer. He's, had, a little bit, he's a little bit uppity. I had his back. Yeah. And I had the had the cross, like the cross collar choke. I was kind of setting up for either uh, bow and arrow or like just feeding the hand. Yeah, loop through, yeah. Yep. And... um you know, and he, he was like, you know, tucking the chin kind of he's, thing. But he's a chunky cat. He's yeah, he's, yeah he's a thick little dude. But he decided he's not going to worry about the grip. He's just going to try and basically cross my feet over so he can like... Oh, so he can ankle lock you. Yeah. Oh, dirty and, dog. And he's very dexterous with the feet. He is. And he starts fucking around with this. Oh, and so no. I like hid my feet and put them back and we're having this little battle I'm just holding his, you know, holding the collar, and he's trying, <laughs> and he was, and I could feel his feet. I'm like, this motherfucker's about to heel hook me Ooh, with his feet, cheeky. So at a point, I was like, that's enough, and I just went rear naked choke Straight over his face, across the face. I'm like, bro, if you're gonna try and heel hook me, like secretly, yeah, I'll, I'm just gonna choke your face. Deserve it. Yeah. So I choked his nose, I think, and his yeah. cheek. Yeah, hey, bit of gee burn. Good yeah. luck to you. Yeah, that's it's a fair, it's a fair trade. Uppity brown belt, but um, yeah, you, your skin gets fucked up. It does. Like you, you, yeah, you're getting you're getting mashed. You're getting exfoliated, which yeah. is not altogether a bad thing. Uh, yeah, like you know, it's scrubbing off some dead cells, and it's you sure. know, but <laughs> you know, if you look at someone who trains jits, they usually look a little bit older than they are. There's a little bit now, nah, yeah, yeah, the you, nah, like the amount of friction and kind of callousing of the face is pretty <laughs> considerable. It is. It's a look that we've all come to love. Like, yeah. that looks hot. Yeah. I say that about, I see some grappling, some, some dude grapplers. I'm like, Oof. that guy looks like a that's savage. Look that's at that guy. Tough. Yeah, you know. Mad. But so, here's the thing. You got to look after yourself. Yeah, if you look after your skin, then one, you can wear the kind of, you can wear the trauma or you can wear the damage of jitsu a bit better. But also you're less exposed to skin infections. Less susceptible like to disease. Yeah, and these things are big, like staff's big, ringworm, fucking, you know, whatever. Like I'm sure there's thousands of different things you pick up off the mats. You're going to have them over the years, but you want to try and, and you know, you want to try to not have to use medication and stuff, right? At no, the you end want of the to day. avoid that. Because look, basically antibiotics are nukes and they take out your gut health. Yeah. So all the good bacteria you might have built up in your gut, nuked. What is not talked about is restoring gut health. Now, we're not going to go hard on gut health now, but you, that, it's actually a process. So once you've gotten rid of the skin infection, the only bad thing about having taken all these antibiotics, and I'm saying you shouldn't, but you need to have a process of getting back to health. And if you're not eating well, then you are even more susceptible to other illnesses at that time. Yeah, you dug a hole for yourself. If you're not careful. But everybody's different, guys. We were just chatting about this before. I am a dry skin kind of person. I had eczema as a child because I had uh, bronchitis and I have different skin issues. I'm not good with soaps and perfumes, no good. So I even have to have special washing detergent so I don't you know, get um, basically like an eczema reaction. Uh, and I am... Like for dishwashing? Yeah, well, no, for cl- like clothes washing. Ah, uh, yeah. I have to have a very specific thing, which is like a non-detergent clothes washer. Right. But whatever, I uh, moisturize flat out. I got bio oil, which is like maybe a bit strong for most people, but it's really good for scars. It's really good for, you know, dry cracked skin. And the other thing I do with my knuckles is you can get this thing called heel balm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's if you if you are aware of pawpaw, like pawpaw ointment. Sometimes people put it on their lips. Similar to that, it's like real sticky ointmenty. Uh, and this is actually eucalyptus based, but it's for people who get cracked heels. Yeah. So uh, there was one time I was working a manual job, and they made you wash your hands in this real harsh chemical. And it would make your knuckles crack. Solvol or something? Uh, it was it was more intense than solvol. It was like a liquid grit. Okay. Solvol. And so you'd get all the crap off your hands, but then your knuckles would just split. I used to work in a fish shop for three years. Oh. And rough. in summertime I would come home yeah. and I would wash my body and my like my whole upper body and my yeah. face and my hands with solvol. Oh the with the fish, grit in it. The fish stink. Yeah. Jesus. Because you would you would wash it all off, you'd be good, and then you'd you'd whatever you'd you'd be later in the evening and your paws would open up again and you'd be like, I fucking smell like fish again. Oh god. Like it would just be coming out of your paws. Oh, so bad. But anyways, please. But I was gonna say like and if any of you you may have experienced this, maybe not necessarily because you're using you know crazy chemicals on your skin, but maybe you do have dry skin or you, you've got working hands and your knuckles crack and it's like paper cuts, but on your knuckles. That's painful. so whenever you bend your fingers, it opens them up. And yeah. this is this is terrible. So for me, um, using this heel balm, it's called your lactol heel balm, is really good on the knuckles and elbows, knees heels, anywhere where you're likely to get dry skin, cracks in the skin where infection can get in. And that was the thing I've, I learned more recently. Even though I've done jiu-jitsu for almost 15 years, no doctor had ever told me this. If you have really dry skin or eczema, you are four to five times more likely to get staph than someone who doesn't. So it's really important that even, even though this might sound a little bit like, oh, it's very metro, it's very metro to talk about skincare. We're actually just saying, hey, you got to look after yourself. You think these fucking ears are metro? <laughs> you seen these things? <laughs> Have you seen metro? this face? Yeah. <laughs> seen, <laughs> seen this gnarled forebrow <laughs> <laughs> from just grinding? Yeah. Oh, it could be. We could make it fashionable. But, uh, but, but you, Joe, you have a kind of slightly different skin type to me. You probably got a slightly more moisturized skin type. Well, I got a, yeah, a couple things. I, when I started jujitsu at like 24 or 25, whatever I was, it was, I had quite, my skin was much, I guess my skin was oilier then. Right. You know, I remember I would get like pimples more often, you know, I was like, you know, still going through that kind of whatever. Gross phase. Yeah. Um, damn. But uh, <laughs> it's good to be on the other side of that. But um, <laughs> shout out to Julian. But um, like the, bloomers in but the what I But what I noticed then was I remember going to like a, a skin doctor. I remember going to a dermatologist actually and was like, oh, I got these pimples and stuff. Dermatologist was like, we need to give you this uh, Roaccutane. He's like, it's this hectic medicine that they, I don't know if they still use it, but it's this hectic medicine that they use for, you, a lot of teenagers and stuff would use it. It would just dry the skin out oh. and it would stop the pimple problem or the oh, acne okay. problem. Right. But um, I looked at, I spoke to another doctor, a naturopath, and he said, mate, have you seen the side effects on this shit? He's like, don't fucking touch with a temple oh, pole. Oh, wow. So I didn't take that. But what, what I was told was like, oh, you need to use a, a, a facial a face, facial wash. Right. And then you need to moisturize and that's it. And, and so I would do this and I would do it after training. I'd finish training. I'd use this wash. You know, it was like a decent brand, like a Cetaphil or something. Sure. Um, and then I'd put the moisturizer. But I was constantly kind of having oily skin. Right. And... It took me a long time to realize, but that whole process was just making my skin worse. Right. So what, what I do now, and I'm, I'm, I'm also older now and I'm not going through that, so I think my skin has kind of just settled a bit. Settled. Um, but I, I had similar, like I've always had little bouts of, um, uh, what's it called? Um, psoriasis. Yes. Which is kind of similar to eczema. Yes. Right, it's sort of the opposite, but it's similar in terms of like the skin drying out and cracking and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get my own skin things and I, and what I notice for me, my skin always plays up during winter, right? It's during the months when it's, when it's dry and yes. it's cool. Cool. And I'm not getting as much sun. Yes. Summer, I'm good. Summer. And here's where I put it down to summer. My skin is, is more moist generally. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I'm getting more regular sun exposure. Yes. So a couple of things on that. Many years ago, I just stopped using anything on my face and I don't, I don't use any products to wash my skin, all I use is a bit of soap for the nether regions. Yes. Under the arms, bathing suit area, and that's it. Right. Everything else is just water. Cool. Because I figure like nothing is lasting on this skin. Like when I go to jiu-jitsu and I'm getting your cross face, <laughs> or I don't, like it's been scrubbed off. I don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, of course. I get it. Um, so, so, you know, water does the job just fine. Occasionally, like when I had longer hair, I might shampoo, but, but even sure. that I don't really do anymore. 
Um, and all I do is use a little bit of moisturizer through the, through the cooler months. Right. When I can feel, I'm like, I might get out of the shower and I tend not to have them too hot. But I'll get out and I'll be like, oh, skin's a bit dry. Like I can feel it now. And so I'll just grab a bit of really neutral moisturizer, upper body face, mm. and that's it. Well, you correct me if I'm wrong here, Joe. Um, did I see you with some coconut oil? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. My, my partner really likes coconut oil as yep. a moisturizer post shower. Yep. Um, I, I got into it and used it a lot for like a couple of years with her. And then I found it's probably a little bit heavy for me. Okay, it's yeah. probably a little bit too moisturizing. Yeah, yeah. So I still have some here at the gym. Just in case. Yeah, yeah and, I, and you know, like maybe two out of every three showers, like I'll, I'll get out and be like, oh, yeah, a little something, so a bit of coconut oil. Yeah. But typically I find like a, like a lighter moisturizer, something that I can buy that's it's not particularly expensive. Mm. But like one of, the, one of the decent brands from a chemist, like a QV. Yes. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, just like their neutral one, it's not for oily skin, it's not for dry skin, it's just like general moisturizer. I find that works really well. Nice. Um, but here's the thing. We had a discussion on the, uh, on the Facebook group, on our Bulletproof of BJJ community, the community page. Yep. And I asked people, and people were throwing, uh, I was like, hey guys, tell me about your skincare routine. And one of the interesting pieces I learned from that was one of the girls in the group said, um, I don't use moisturizer like right before training because that is designed to be pulled into the pores right. to moisturize the skin. And she's like, if that's happening and you're on the mats yep. and you're exposed to bacteria, right. you don't want to be pulling that shit in. And of I'm course. like, I asked if like how... Like, how accredited or how qualified is that information? She's like, it's just my impression. She's sure, like, I'm sure, not a scientist. Sure. Yeah. But so when I think about it, I would do the moisturizing thing after a shower. I usually don't end up training jiu-jitsu for at least a couple of hours after that. Sure. That seems like a good balance for me. Definitely. Well, I was going to say, I, God, this is going to get personal. Here we go. We don't have to. But please, they want to know. I have, I have a different facial wash to what I use for the body wash. And I use ego derm, mm-hmm. you know, like it's it's a very you know, it's probably just water with some white stuff <laughs> in it it to is, make it yeah. look like it's not, you know, it's just make me feel like I am clean. Uh, you know, I have just super sensitive skin, and I have different different wash for the balzonis. Oh, a third wash, yeah, for the nether regions, for the nether regions, My just because it's different. And uh, yeah, that's just to make sure everything stays healthy, and just because I, it's different, the face is different, body. All that. Have you ever gone like, like min- like what I'm like minimal, minimal lotions? I did go minimal lotions for a while, and then I actually it was pretty good up until a point that I started getting trapped hairs because I'm a I'm a hair hairy guy. I'm a hair suit man, and uh, I need a certain amount of scrubbing. I'm always with the loofah. I also, because I'm part Wolverine, that's partly why uh-huh. I have mutant healing factor. Yeah. My skin cells produce at a crazy rate. <laughs> so <laughs> I need actually extra exfoliation. If I'm not, you know, if I'm not fighting you, Joe, I have to go, obviously go fight, you know, demons that are trying to take over the world. <laughs> it's what it is when you're an X-Man. Um, but yeah, like I think. So there it is, guys. You got to find what works for you. That's right. You do have to find what works for you. And also. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, go get this product, but I've been fucking with this for 20 years to know the sweet spot for yeah. me. And like we have talked before about like having an antibacterial option post training, you know, whether that's, you know, a, a natural oil like a tea tree oil or something like that, which has antibacterial properties. Uh, but really the, the thing that I've probably come come back to is not having too many showers yeah you want you want your body to be able to do what it does best naturally that's and every right. time you clean it and strip it you're destroying yeah a layer of immunity in a way and i'm not saying don't shower after training but i'm saying we also had kind of had this chat there's a, a bit of a difference between say you lift some weights you sweat a little bit maybe armpits a bit but that's it you're not pumping sweat just come off the mat from jujitsu and it's that, not someone else's sweat and yeah. then someone else's in an, it's not 15 different layers of DNA on That's you. right. That's a, so maybe that doesn't warrant a shower. Maybe it does. But if you're planning to have more than one or two showers a day, like you've got to think about is that actually what's good for your body? Because if I train jiu-jitsu twice a day, I'm, I'm having two showers. And if I'm doing jiu-jitsu and lifting weights, you've got to have a think that maybe – yeah, you just got to find what works for you in that way. Yeah. Um, last thing, I did have a couple of people come through on the, on the Instagram asking a similar thing. 
are like, hey, what do you do about, like, I've had ringworm a bunch of times, had to pull out of a comp because of it, blah, blah, blah. I said to the dude, look, I, I, I can't, I don't think I can help you, man. It's not a question for me. But I did ask, like, what's your deal with showering and moisturizing and stuff? He said, oh, I'm a, trades, I'm a tradesman. He's in the UK and he's like, and I finish work and I have a hot shower and then I go to training. Right. And I, my skin feels dry. And yeah. I was like, dude, maybe try a bit of moisturizer. And he, he got back to me like a week. He said, skin feels way better. Right. So potentially it's just finding that thing that like stop doing that or add that in yep. so that your skin can be a bit healthier like, you know, generally. And that's your answer. Yes, sir. Right on. Guys, um, if you want more help with any of this, there's two things that you want to do. You can, one, go to our YouTube channel where we put out a shitload of content around strength, mobility. We've started throwing up some of our training sessions on there. We have. So you can see JT and I getting after it along with a few other um, savage cats here at the gym. Um, you can watch all of these podcast episodes. We've got them all on video, so you can watch it. You can see our mad moisturized heads. Um, <laughs> but also, the newsletter, which goes out every week, written by JT, and it's essentially all around discussions that are going to help to enrich your BJJ journey. If you go to our webpage, bulletproofforbjj.com, scroll down to the bottom, chuck in your email, you'll get that newsletter every week. It's the sickest newsletter. It's absolutely free, and it's just another way that we would like to help you on your journey Thank you and we'll catch you next week. Thanks, guys.